In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Wednesday, the twenty second of November, twenty twenty three. 33rd week in ordinary time and today we keep the memorial of Saint Cecilia. Devotion to Saint Cecilia in whose honor a basilica was constructed here in Rome in the 5th century has spread far and wide because of the passion of Saint Cecilia which holds her up as a perfect example of a Christian woman who embraced virginity and suffered martyrdom for the love of Christ. As with early matters, nothing much is known about Cecilia except her existence and her name. With the additional complication that so many stories have grown up around her that any remaining historical facts are obscured. No one knows quite why she should suddenly have become popular in the middle of the 6th century, some 200 years after her death and her association with music is also a mystery. It may be real, or it may come from the description in the Passion of Cecilia, singing to God in her heart while the musicians were playing on her wedding day, or it may come from a linguistic confusion where the Passion describes her being stifled to death, candentibus organis, with the pipes glowing red hot, This could have been misread as cantantibus organis with the organ playing. Anyway, she's said to be the patron saint of the musicians. A lot has been said about her. And we want to wish today all the musicians a happy feast. Because St. Augustine says, he who sings well prays twice. May St. Cecilia intercede for all of you who sing for God that you may do it with all passion so that his name may be glorified. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Venencia Manyakara from Tete, Mozambique, celebrating the birthday today, Text for us the first reading. Crispin Gwala Gwala from Rilongwe, Malawi. Text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Christopher Tusime from Oima Diocese in Uganda as he celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of your handmaid, Saint Cecilia, grant, we pray, that what has been devoutly handed down concerning her may offer us examples to imitate and proclaim the wonders worked in his servants by Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, the creator of the world will give life and breath back to you again. A reading from the second book of Maccabees, 2 Maccabees 7, verses 1, 20 to 31. In those days, it happened also that seven brothers and their mother were arrested and were being compelled by the king under torture with whips and cords to partake of unlawful swine's flesh. The mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. Though she saw her seven sons perish within a single day, 
She bore it with good courage because of her hope in the Lord. She encouraged each of them in the language of their fathers. Filled with a noble spirit, she fired her woman's reasoning with a man's courage and said to them, I do not know how you came into being in my womb. It was not I who gave you life and breath, nor I who set in order the elements within each of you. Therefore, the creator of the world, who shaped the beginning of man and devised the origin of all things, will in his mercy give life and breath back to you again, since you now forget yourselves for the sake of his laws. Antiochus felt that he was being treated with contempt, and he was suspicious of yet the reproachful tone. The youngest brother, being still alive, Antiochus not only appealed to him in words, but promised with us that he would make him rich and enviable if he would turn from the ways of his fathers, and that he would take him for his friend and entrust him with public affairs. Since the young man would not listen to him at all, the king called the mother to him and urged her to advise the youth to save himself. After much urging on his part, she undertook to persuade her son. But, leaning close to him, she spoke in their native tongue as follows, deriding the cruel tyrant, my son, have pity on me. I carried you nine months in my womb and nursed you for three years and have freed you and brought you up to this point in your life and have taken care of you. I beg you, my child, to look at the heaven and the earth and see everything that is in them and recognize that God did not make them out of things that existed. Thus also mankind comes into being. Do not fear this bush, but prove worthy of your brothers. Accept death, so that in God's mercy I may get you back again with your brothers. While she was still speaking, the young man said, What are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's command, but I obey the command of the law that was given to our fathers through Moses. But you, who have contrived all sorts of evil against the Hebrews, will certainly not escape the hands of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorio Psalm, Psalm chapter 17, verse 1. Verse 5 to 6, verse 8, and verse 15. The response is taken from Psalm 17, verse 15b. And the response is, When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord, O Lord. Hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my crime. Turn your ear to my prayer, nor deceit on my lips. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O oh Lord. I kept my steps firmly in your path. My feet have never faltered. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O oh God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O oh Lord. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, I shall be filled 
with the vision of your praises, O oh Lord. Gospel acclamation. John 15, verse 16. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I chose you from the world that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit shall abide, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 28. At that time, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable. Because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive kingly power and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten pounds and said to them, Trade with this till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent an embassy before him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received kingly power, he commanded these servants to whom he had given money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by trading. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your pound has gained ten pounds more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then the other came saying, Lord, here is your pound, which I kept laid away in a napkin, for I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you out of your own mouth, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking up what I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money into the bank? And at my coming, I should have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, Take the pound from him, and give it to him who has ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. I tell you that to everyone who has will more be given. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. And when Jesus had said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We see another example in today's first reading, the second book of Maccabees, where we see the woman and her seven sons. 
The woman who teaches us that we should not stop instructing our children until their death. We should help them maintain their principles without fail. And this woman does that. She helps her children to keep their faith, to refuse to eat pork to the end of their lives. Not that there is anything bad about pork. Of course, if you eat too much of it, it may affect your health. You may end up having high blood pressure. You may end up having cholesterol. You may end up having too much fats in your body. Health issue. But you know, there is something about their conviction in not taking pork. They connected it to their religious life. They connected it to their faith that a pig is a dirty animal. And it is connected to anything that is bad, to anything that is dirty. And when you eat it, you become like it. And they wanted to live by that. You might be having erroneous faith. You might be convinced of something that may not have any bearing on your ordinary life. But if you are committed to it, you are convinced of it. Live for it to the end of your life. That's exactly what these seven sons did. And their mother was there to encourage them in their faith. I don't know what you mothers are doing to your own children if you just allow them to live their lives recklessly and you are even promoting or encouraging crookedness in their lives. I don't know how you are helping your children to maintain their faith. It is by your own steadfastness. The way you live your own life, that's how your children are going to die with their convictions. The gospel passage of today is the parable of the 10 pounds or the 10 minas. Now the mina was a basic standard of weight among the ancient Hebrews. In the sacred system of weights, the sacred mina was equal to 60 shekels and 60 sacred minas equals one sacred talent. So a talent was bigger than a mina. So let us not confuse the parable of the 10 pounds with the parable of the talents found in the Gospel of Matthew. Here we are told they were given one mina each, one pound each, 10 of the servants given one pound each, 10 representing the whole community of believers. Each one given the same amount. And you know, instructions were given from the very beginning. Tread with them. Meaning, when God brought us here, he created us in the same way. That's what the writer wants to say in this story. God created us equally. And when he brought us in this world, he said... Come on, do something with what I have done to you. We are all the same in the eyes of God. The only problem is that we don't risk to trade ourselves. We are that mina. We are that pound. God did not bring you here to just wait for people to do something for you. No, you have to do something to transform the world. Look at the results. The first one came who was given one mina, one pound, and he says, I have made ten more. Another one came, I have made five more. It is depending on how you maximize your own efforts. I'm telling you, God is going to judge us. On the basis of how we maximized the potentials he had given us. The pound he has given us. There is so much potential in us. And we waste it away. Many of us are just sitting there proud to be taken care of. Taken care of even at the age of 30. You want to be taken care of instead of taking care of other people. Where are you? What are you doing in your life? Come on, get up from where you are and start making use of that pound. 
because God will ask you to give an account, not from what you had from the beginning, but from what you gained on the way, from how you multiplied your efforts. He's not satisfied with just doing the minimum. We should learn to risk. We should learn to come out of the comfort zone. See how he gets upset with somebody who just sat on that pound? There are so many people who sit on the pound. They just want to do the minimum. They just get up avoiding to offend anybody. They are just following the law as it tells them to. And they forget to do good to other people. And God will say, you knew me. Why didn't you invest? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Well, do thou end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Wednesday to you. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me and I I'm desperate for you and I Your bed.